Are you afraid of the coding and creative coding? Fear not. Try visual programming with VVVV and experience a whole new level of milk. My name is Jorek, co-conspirator at VVVV Enterprises and I'm here to welcome you to this second episode of VVVV TV. Now in this episode I have the great pleasure to uh, chat to one of your top influences. When I met him for the first time, that was around uh, 10 years ago at Note 8, uh, he barely spoke a word in English. And today it is really hard to stop him from talking. Um, but TV time is limited and it's expensive, so we have to concentrate and uh, we really want to focus on one topic today. And the topic is uh, called uh, Musique. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm spelling it right. Musique. Uh, that's the title of his uh, latest project. And I hope to squeeze out some uh, patches from him from that project. Now, what other people go to university for, to study for years to achieve, smart as he is, he just chose for his name. Please welcome from Italy, Dottore. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Dottore. Thanks, Greg. Such a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure. So, I just told the audience we're going to talk about... My last project. Yeah. Which you call? Musique. Musique. Mm. What is it? It's, um, it's a show. Mm, it's an audiovisual show. <coughs> so, it's a, it's a concert. Um, in which um, there's a... It's a classical music concert. Okay. With a piano and um, with myself, with my equipment, with a huge projection behind. So, so uh, this is the setup. Concert That's visualization. A concert, setup. Yeah, yeah, it's a music visualization project. And the, what's the music? Can you give us a brief uh, mm. yeah. introduction? The music is, um, it's got many pieces from Bach mm -hmm. and then some contemporary and modern uh, musics like from Argo Part or uh, Scriabin, um, and then Prokofiev. Okay, as so though this is a commissioned work. Yeah, I, I heard it was commissioned by Società del Quartetto di Milano, which is a music so so society yeah. from Milan. And yeah, it was good because they, they contacted me and asked me to yeah to, to do something to do a project. So then we we chose the, the musician uh, was this um, really good player. She is called uh, Gloria Campaner. And, and yeah. so this the thing happened already, right? Yeah. So just uh, the first um, show was on the fifth, actually on the fourth of April. Okay. So less than one month ago. And so um, maybe let's just uh, have a look at it, uh, how it looks, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit in detail. Yeah. I mean, the show is composed by twelve pieces. Mm -hmm. So um, and I. I, I still don't have the material of all of the, the pieces, so I just said um, we can show the video of one of them okay. um, to give an idea and then we can uh, dig into it. Let's do that. Okay. For that I'm gonna switch to your desktop. Yeah. We're at the desktop. And I'll play the video. You. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, that was the whole uh, movement, the, one of the movements. One of the pieces. Yeah. In, in, in full. And, and excuse the crappy quality, I guess, through yeah, the, streaming the streaming and such. So I hope there will be a better hard. documentation. Up now, we want to talk a little bit about <laughs> what we saw. But because this is what the audience saw on the big screen. But there was something more to it. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the performative um, approach was really, um, uh, was really interesting because for the first time I managed to, <coughs> to participate actively in, um, in managing um, some parameters of the, of the visuals. In fact, I was in the middle of the stage together with the pianist, with all my equipment, I was using um, a tracking a Kinect to track my body and also some uh, the controllers from the Vive. And so you I'm brought us a video where we can see a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, it was like a teaser. So there's something in there That's we can maybe show. Switch to that. Yeah. Um, so in, here we see a little bit of how you were actively yeah, I uh, taking part in this in this performance next to the piano player. Exactly. I, um, I had like a, an area of five meters square and I was literally dancing and uh, uh -huh. moving around. Obviously in each movement, in each piece, there is a completely different interaction. Mm. Um, so some of them are more static, uh, some of them are very quite mm, dynamic. So I was literally dancing around. And <coughs> but so you had the Kinect, full yeah. body skeleton, and exactly. then the and controls. And then the vibes to have more accurate information of yeah. um, orientation, and then plus controls over the, um, the interface. Um, yeah. So that's that's very interesting to me because you also told me that, like way before this, you you started to work on it. You said you want to create specifically for that. A new timeline control interface yeah <clears throat> for this performance exactly um, basically I s they commissioned this project like one year ago mm -hmm. so um, then I decided that I wanted to create and to, to try a different way of managing and creating contents and and one of the, the biggest problem that I faced in, during the last ages uh, was these two aspects of the, um, of creating the live show, which is which are um, you want to define a, a, a development in the show during over the time. show over time. Yeah. Um, so you want to set some parameters or some aspects of the visuals over time, but at the same time you are managing live data, so yeah. you, you, that you, you can't really fix. Okay. So you have the, the combination of. Of two different timelines, exactly keyframes, set keyframes, mm -hmm. and the live input. And that's why I started to think about okay, um, maybe there's a different way to combine mm -hmm. these two different worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so I came, I came up with this idea of Kairos, which is the name of the software that I started to develop, and the one that I presented briefly at Node. At Node, you had Node. A, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like briefly. I mean, briefly, it was an hour or something. No. Yeah, oh, really. <laughs> no. But also later, mm. in you showed something in yeah. the forum, and we wanted to show the. There's the link. a yeah. Oh, sorry, I have to go here. Yeah. In so if forum. you go to the VV Org forum and look for this thread, it's called Kairos Software. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm continuously updating um, the thread, so you can follow it with some videos also. Yeah, if you go down here and uh, watch those videos, those are quite. Uh, yeah. Interesting. They give they give an, an actual overview of what's going on. Yeah. And so yeah, I started to develop it, and, and obviously. Uh, but then what happened? Then I came to Berlin. Uh, I, I started to use this VL thing. So um, I fell in love with it, and, then, and I, I understood that that's what that was I needed for uh, for creating such a mm -hmm. new software. But then. Uh, so I started to, to develop it, um, but then in uh, January, like, uh, I realized that it wasn't developed enough. And that was how long before the... Two months. Two months before, before the, the actual show, you noticed that the way you it planned to do it... The, I mean, 
the plan was really good, yeah. but obviously, obviously, <laughs> the software itself was is, is working. Yeah. The, the, hard, the, the core is completely working, but the UI wasn't good enough to allow me to build fast enough all the contents, and that was crucial, no? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> So I had to basically quit. <laughs> uh, it was quite dramatic <laughs> yeah. moment because I realized that okay, I need to start from scratch in again, again, <laughs> again. And you from, have from scratch mm, the good old uh, VVV side. Um, so yeah, um, I had just two months, one and a half months to develop twelve pieces, completely different. Each each one is completely unique. Because so in, in good old creative coding style, you didn't start with the content, but you started <laughs> with the control interface. That's what we all like to do. Yeah, it's crazy, you know, yeah. <laughs> No, I guess that everyone can relate to that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm, so yeah, it was a bit dramatic, the development uh, of, the, of the contents. But it happened, like, as we heard and we saw. Um, One of them. Yeah. And like, what I wanted to ask is, did you, in, does that mean you, you had to throw everything away that you have built? Because you've been working on like for, for some months on this cars thing. I was so productive. I mean, I learned a new language and, um, and obviously I got in touch with the huge potential of it. So um, many functionalities and many utilities that I developed during this research, I, um, I used obviously as, um, as nodes inside the, the patches of mm -hmm. before. So um, I partially used that. Okay, so this, the, the final show is kind of a hybrid between VVV and VL. Yeah, I mean, mm, from, from there on, uh, I couldn't stop to develop in VL. So yeah. also new, new functionalities of, of the scenes are done in VL because yeah. it's more convenient. And that's what we're gonna see in a moment. But also. I hear <coughs> from uh, ah, yeah. the, the yeah, yeah. intercom, mm -hmm. I hear that we have to take a little break now. And for that, I would like to ask you to step out. The, we, 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 will be, we will be back. Tour. That means our beginners V4 Academy is going on tour. That means our beginners course is coming to you. In just six days we will start with the very basics of V4 and then use that for projection mapping to animate all the things around you. We will use motion tracking to create whole body interfaces like this one here, I can change the color of my background. And then we'll use sound analysis to make all of that sound reactive. Anyway, we'll also learn how to tie all of that together using custom electronics, like this with cables and motors. <laughs> Our beginners course this year will happen in London, Berlin, Athens, St. Petersburg and Linz. Find all the details at www.academy. Be quick to apply. Experience shows that places are gone really soon. And we are back. Cool. So uh, let's now actually dive <coughs> into the patches. You you brought the patch uh, with you. Um, can we? Uh, we show it uh, here. So this is um, part of the patch because let's let's first talk about the the complete setup. So mm -hmm. there was one 
uh, final output full HD. Yeah. That was it. And that came from one uh, renderer machine. Exactly. And then there was another machine. That was managing somehow the, um, the render one. So it's getting so in the Kinect and... Uh, it was getting the, all the devices, um, the piano. Actually, something I need to mention is that there was um, a spe um, prepared piano huh? for this concert. So it was a grand piano um, provided with a, with a sensor that was giving me the MIDI out yeah. of the keys. So it was quite a, a special... Precise uh, thing that you precise, could, yeah. yeah. Cool, so there's this one machine that's mm. taking all this data in. Yeah, from Kinect, Vive, MIDI. It's processing, um, preparing the data, and sending to the render machine. Yeah. Via network? Via like network. What did you... Like OSC or OSC, CPU yeah. OSC. I mean, I try to reduce as, as much as possible yeah. all the, the data, so it's purely OSC, and that's the setup. And let's not. Uh, I mean, we could go into a lot of details of the whole setup, but we want to look at one thing uh, specifically, which is this one movement yeah. that we just saw, and want to analyze the patch yeah, a bit. Let's go into it. So maybe let's. Uh, can, can we start it here now? In the try. Yeah, it was up. Um, should we should hear something. Do we see something? Yes, something happens. Okay. Up to here. We should hear something. Okay, let me try to move the camera a bit. Also, maybe can you move the camera a bit though? So this is what we saw yeah. earlier. So yeah, basically, <coughs> this music is uh, it's got two voices, two melodies, two yeah, two voices. So it's focused on two voices, and that's the representation of the two voices. What are the elements of the scene? Are we have these uh, strings, strings. Uh, and then this, uh, this geometry here that gets uh, generated out of the tips of these yeah. strings. Let's first talk about the strings a bit because they they already in it in themselves they are quite special. I have a feeling. Yeah. Um, How are they, they are, happening? Yeah, it's a uh, spring simulation. Verlet integration. What's it called? Verlet. Verlet? Yes. Verlet. Verlet. And how does that work briefly? It's a GPU based Verlet uh, simulation. Mm -hmm. So, um, just um, it's a library that I developed in a um, Google share. Okay. So, I can simulate any spring simulation. So, it's ropes or even um, cloth into the Simulations. Mm -hmm. So in this case, yeah, it was ropes. And, and it means so, it seems to me whenever a, a key on the piano is pressed, then a new rope. A new note is emitted. Okay. A new note is emitted. And which um, is a new rope. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, a new particle is, is emitted. There you see the, the dots, the white dots are the notes. Mm -hmm. and, and a new rope simulation starts. So, um, and they bounce a bit. Maybe turn down the sound a oh, bit, yeah. I don't know how oh, yeah. Yeah. annoying that is. So, um, yeah, I emit them and they simulate the behavior. Can, can we think of each rope being made out of a number of points yeah. that are this little particle system or exactly. like spring simulation system? It's exactly like that. Yeah. It's, um, and then, then along those points, you create a, a little tube. Mm -hmm. You interpolate the positions yeah. uh, using bisply interpolation, and you get a nice, smooth. And that's happening tube. on the mm -hmm. GPU. On the well. GPU, so, obviously. Yeah. So first, the compute shader that generates so just uh, this chain of uh, the points. Yeah. And then there in, there's an interpolation that uh, to generate the geometry yeah. out of it. Geometry shader. Yeah, something like. That. Okay. So that's the. The strings, yeah, and then we see those triangles hanging yeah. from the strings. Yeah, uh, they are just a mm, connection between the, the dots, which are the notes again. Actually, can we look in the patch 
to see yeah. just I mean a little patch porn I don't know how <laughs> how uh, useful that is to someone so this was the patch and it's quite a mess obviously because I had like two days to develop this piece so it was a crazy, crazy. situation yes. um, so I'm receiving all the data from the music here, the process data, okay. the melody information, but we'll get into it maybe after mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this one. Okay, then I got the um, ROP simulation. So I can provide um, all the settings for the simulation. And I'm using VL to basically Join all the, the join the data type, data type of, of the world settings. The world, yeah. yeah, and then um, yeah, here I receive the buffer, the final buffer. What of the simulation from the from the rope simulation? Okay, the spring simulation, and I interpolate it. That that is somewhere else on the GPU. Exactly. Okay, which is here in a separate patch. Yeah, this patch is dedicated to do just that, rope simulation. Okay. And specifically here, um, this is what this is the shader that actually evaluate the, the spring strengths. Yeah, so this is receiving the settings? This is receiving some instructions from um, this node that I made in VL, which is taking the, the settings and is building uh, all the, um, the, the, the schemes to, um, that are used in the computer to simulate the spring because you can't really um, evaluate in one pass all the um, interconnection between the points. Mm -hmm. You need to um, analyze the topology and subdivide in groups, let's say, to not overlap the, um, the constraints. And so you split on one, one frame simulation in many passes. Okay. And to do that, to analyze the topology and subdividing group, I wrote this plugin in uh, this node in VL. This is a classic use case for VL because in VV that would be spreading hell yeah, all over the place. It would be hell. So here you yeah. can... And so here I, I was evaluating the topologies, preparing all the instructions and sending directly via a buffer mm -hmm. to the computer shader. You're using this nice new feature exactly, obviously. that you can basically directly from VL... From here, to buffer description, you output it and... You go directly to the GPU. Yeah. I cool. I upload it to the GPU here. Cool. So, yeah, for example, here... Uh, there were 16 iterations. Which means... In each, per frame. Per frame. Per frame, per row. I was about... I was evaluating uh, 64 passes. Uh-huh. Because um, you need at, at least four passes to cover this, the, um, the constraint uh, simulation for the topology that you provide. Okay. Okay. In, in this, I have to in this specific you. Sen yeah. scenario, yeah. Uh, yeah. with this kind of ropes, yeah. mm, and then you can increase how, how many times you want. Obviously, if to you increase evaluate accuracy. Uh, exactly, yeah. if you evaluate more times, you get more accuracy. Okay. Okay, but let's go back to the other patch where we saw the. So this is where it's. Computed and then we get a buffer of all the you positions. The final position of yeah. the points that we can read it back here, for example, to display yeah. to, to create the tubes. Yeah. So I, I, I get a buffer and use this uh, customized, custom, custom, customized version of a spline buffer node from um, Kyle uh, Instance Noodles. From the noodles, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> No, no, this case scenario, this project was really um, um, one of those cases in which you, you, you have to use any possible <laughs> package around. That is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I would have, I would have lost so, many, so much time just building stuff. Yeah. So I use um, yeah, some of uh, those nodes. I use so, Super so Physical also. So, so, sorry to stop you again. So this uh, patch is creating the geometry mm -hmm. is that there is inside the geometry shader Takes, somehow. Yeah, the, the buffer and connects the dot using this spline. To a tube. Yeah, exactly. And, and then outputs a geometry. Yeah. And then this goes to the super physical pipeline, 
which um, also well known. Yeah. Well, thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's a customized version because I, I needed, I wanted to, have, um, to to restructure a bit how, how, uh -huh. it, is, how it is. So um, I created these um, these modules that are like the, 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 like any shader. You, so you didn't touch the, the shader, but you no, no, just no. The, um, the, um, the algorithm itself, the shader yeah. is, is that. Yeah. I didn't touch. I just restructured a bit the way <coughs> you provide information and you, you create the layer out. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. You can treat it as any other shader, like the phone. You provide a geometry, all the settings, um, yeah. and then, yeah. And then it gives you all the nice uh, shadows for free. Exactly. And the nice lighting, shading. Okay, we can stop it. So that's so that now we have the tubes hanging from the ceiling, and then and then, obviously, I read the same buffer here, where I've got a couple the same of buffer shaders. being the buffer that describes the simulation the, of the rope the, simulation. Yeah, and I take the tips of the tubes of the ropes. Yeah, and I connect in a certain way the, these tips, forming the, the triangles. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we see that node script geometry thing twice here. Yeah, yeah, I found easier to, to divide the two voices. In this so case, one on the other voice. Exactly. Yeah. So that, but obviously, if I, I, mean, I would do it differently now with all the time. But yeah, well, no, 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 no but no, I, I just to that, for. You know, <laughs> this could be one single yeah, thing. Yeah, but okay. A more uh, prototype. So that still again, this generates uh, a geometry that then gets to the super physical. Again. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was one more element in the scene. If you can zoom in to the very tip, there is a little. It's a classic. The, on, on each tip, there is a little. Quad. Quad. It's just a quad. Just a constant quad. Not lovely constant quad. No shading applied no. at all. <laughs> In fact, they, you see them in the dark, right? Yeah. Like constellations. They're not even fogged out or something. No, yeah, there's a bit of fog, yeah. if I remember. No, that there's fog. But yeah. You Every see project it. should have a plain quad Obviously. in it. Even <laughs> if you don't see it, yeah, just behind the plan or. For luck. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> so let me check my notes here. We talked about the triangles, uh, the physics, the mending. The what? The melody. The, before we talk melody, there is also the camera work, right? Mm. Going on, or is that more in, in other pieces? In, uh, in the other, let's talk later. Okay. Um, all right, then the question is really, the, I mean, the, the avid watcher of this whole thing should still be confused as to how you manage, because to, to draw the melodies in different colors. I mean, everyone who knows MIDI knows that a note is pressed, then you get the information of the note, which is velocity and pitch. pitch. And obviously there is no information about uh, the melody. Yeah, so in this piece you, you notice, you would notice uh, easily, because as you see, these stripes, of these geometries, are not a unique chain, okay? They are divided in chunks. Mm -hmm. And that's it's very related to the music itself, how the voice is behaving. And those are melodies. But as you were saying, melodies doesn't exist in music. I mean, when you play something, you don't play melodies, you play notes. And the melodies, it's a level of abstraction over music. Yeah. That happens in our mind. So we hear uh, the, the frequencies that change and we imagine, we feel a movement in it. But it's just in our mind. But do you think like when Bach wrote this piece, did he think in melodies or in notes? I mean, I mean when you're a musician, you don't really split these two things. Yeah. I mean, uh, you compose something because it works and brings you to feel that movement. So it's obviously, it's quite strictly connected. So actually, music theory developed in centuries in certain way because it was triggering something 
in our abstraction. But it, it, don't, isn't it weird then that sheet music doesn't cover that aspect? I mean, is it not necessary? It's or? not necessary. I mean, when you play, that's it's also nice because you got a sort of window of freedom in interpreting the music. Yeah. And that's I mean that's why if you listen a good musician, it's capable of. Um, taking out from the music, the same music material, the score, is, is good at taking out more aspects of it. But then it's making it so difficult for everyone who wants to visualize such a music and who only gets the MIDI notes in. It's so difficult for them. If MIDI would have that information... <laughs> yeah, but it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Because we are in the, in the present, we are not in future and past. And melody is just about connecting future to past. Yeah. So it doesn't exist right now. So tell us. So what, how did you manage to still be able to okay. show them? Since the program of the concert um, was full of Bach music, and we know that Bach is mostly about the, the movement of voices. Um, Intertwining. And, yeah, kind of. moving yeah. up and down, yeah. dialoguing each other. And so for me, it was really a priority to, to find a way to, to deal, to, to work with melodies. Mm -hmm. So, um, I basically um, created a software to, um, to add, to append these information, okay. this level of, of abstraction to the music itself. So, since I was working with a, a MIDI device, during the rehearsals, um, I recorded uh, the piano, the 12 pieces, uh, both the audio and the MIDI. So I was, I had the scores, the, the music scores as a MIDI file, mm -hmm. as a reference. So um, I basically developed a software to add information to that score. Okay. An extra software again. Extra, completely independent editing software. Just as you do. Uh, in VVVV. Yeah, well, this is just the patch. The real software is VL based. Uh -huh. And let me load Gavot. So same. that's the piece that we just heard. Yes, exactly. So as you see, well, I mean. Move it down again a bit, the renderer, then it's. Okay. Yep. See? Mm -hmm. okay. As you see, this is the raw recording from, uh, from the MIDI. The piano from, player, from the as it was played. Exactly. Yeah. So mm, this is what you got, literally. Some, Just a bunch uh, of notes. Bunch of notes. Yeah. When they start, and so I needed a way to to add information to it. To clearly, you see, if you look at them, you see a line here. Gives but, you an idea. But still, yeah. you need. <laughs> it's uh, still an abstraction, really. Yeah. So I managed to, in this super stupid little software, you got ten available. Uh, voices okay. okay and you can choose uh, let's say the second one and let's create let me zoom in zoom in a bit let's create mm, the first voice of the bus it goes that way okay. so i can connect the dots <laughs> yeah and so you built this editor from scratch yeah where you load midi data and then you connect midi notes from scratch exactly Do you have an undo yeah, for example, if I'm creating here, I can switch back. Obviously. <laughs> or yes. I can add notes. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> or you can, you can also... That uh, was it? I don't even remember. Can, so this is the undo. What's it doing? Oh, well, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then, so this is one... Yeah, voice, then you can build the other two one. Two melodies in one voice, then you build another the other, the melody. Other one. Yeah, you just add information to the notes. And since this is not, I mean, this is nothing a computer could do, at Obviously. least today, maybe in the future. The purpose of doing this software yeah. was obviously um, for me to add information, but also to uh, provide this software to other people. To other, for example, there's my, fr my brother, uh -huh. who um, during the, the development period was in um, Cyprus but I sent him the software because he's a musician so um, and I didn't have time to do 
all the, all the pieces. So uh -huh. he helped me how to, <laughs> by you editing could, in some spare time. Some you could the, spread out the work exactly. by <laughs> multi <-threading>, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So he was sending me, yeah. send, send me, send me, sending me back the, um, the final text files, which were containing all the information regarding the melodies. Yeah, but so again, so you built this software in VL, this editor. Yeah, it's VL based. In VL that allows anyone to make those melodies mm -hmm. and save them as text files. As a text file. Okay, this was the first part of the process. Okay, now what do you do with them? Actually, yeah, we're coming back. back. Exactly. And if we go to the MIDI module, where all the magic happens. Um, here we are. This is the um, VL patch in which everything happens regarding MIDI. Okay. Which means I get the um, the MIDI from the from the piano. That's the plain straight MIDI as it comes. Exactly. Okay. So as you say, uh, MIDI is very limited um, protocol. So it's just not on, not off. Mm -hmm. Just the pitch and the um, the amplitude, but it's not enough to reconstruct the complexity of the sound, how it behaves. Mm -hmm. So um, in this module here, I basically simulated the sound, the energy of each note of the piano. Okay. So, um, so I built a, a custom uh, data type, which is piano note, mm -hmm. and I had 80, 88 of them. Yes. For the 88 for, keys yeah, of the eight, piano? One for each. And yeah, I was receiving the live input from, from the sensor and I was simulating the behavior of that particular key. For, I mean, for, of each one of them. Okay. And the update was quite easy. I was taking the pressed note. What, so when I press the note, I write its velocity, its volume, in, into the energy mm -hmm. field. And then uh, there is a simulation, so the sound decay, okay, slightly. Yeah, obviously, yeah. But decay differently if you keep it pressed or if you release. Yeah. If you keep it pressed, it's quite, it goes quite slowly. If you lead, go down mm -hmm, easily. Mm -hmm. Then there is also the sustain pedal that helps you to keep it up. And that you also get via MIDI, the information? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> From the same MIDI, uh, for a specific uh, channel, I yeah. got the same. Signal. So I was simulating like a particle system. Okay, I was simulating the notes. So I was, <clears throat> yeah. You, you showed me that earlier. How that looks? Can we? Yeah, I don't have. Um, you can kind of. We would play it again. Yeah. You play. You probably notice here, even if. Yeah, it's based on color here, but. So the brightness. The brightness is the simulation of the volume, the energy of that note. And this doesn't come from MIDI, obviously. It's, it's, it's a bit like adding a damper, uh, like anyone else would add a damper after the MIDI, but this is obviously more advanced because it's yeah, because not just a plain... Definitely not, because the, the, <clears throat> the note behaves differently. When you press it, it jumps immediately and then release with different um, behaviors. Also, the, um, the highest note yeah. uh, decay more um, in a faster way. Quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more quickly um, than rather the than the yeah. others. So you need to um, simulate also those aspects to really reflect what you hear from the yeah. piano. So already some quite, quite some level of sophistication in only that little uh, part there. Yeah. yeah. And then, this this part here is very important. So MIDI tracker. Okay, what's that? Yeah, basically, I have the um, I have the MIDI uh, track or the piece. Okay, the one the you recorded. recorded yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my reference. That's where where I append information like melodies, or I can use it even to to say, okay, in this part of the music, I want to create something new. So I use it as a reference in a sort of timeline. Mm -hmm. But still, that's a recording. And I, I'm pretty sure that the, the new um, interpretation will be different, okay? So I needed a way to, uh, to synchronize with the live inputs from the piano, from, from, with the live performance. Yeah. That's why um, I asked 
uh, Tabian, if you could help. And he basically developed this, this node in VL, which is a, uh, it's a tracker. So it, it takes the MIDI reference, the, the file that I recorded, it takes the live input from the piano, and try and find the, the position. It tells you where in where the we recording are we are now. Now, and even if the if the, even if the piano player makes slight mistakes, obviously we had to take care of that. Yeah. So <coughs> it's quite intelligent, <coughs> and you can manage to to to, to fix uh, those problems. So yeah. he's got a sort of window in which it looks. So this node has a certain um, possibility to be that node. So it does many. Um, evaluations and in the end it was quite accurate. And it worked for all the different pieces. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. That's uh, quite an yeah. interesting thing you have no, there. No, it's, it's quite strong because yeah. um, actually when I recorded um, the, the first reference um, that in the end were also the last one because I created the melodies and I, I appended the melodies on those references. First and recordings. I, yeah. yeah, and I couldn't change them. Yeah. But um, those recordings were made in uh, October, and obviously the musician changed it quite drastically the way she was playing. So, yeah. But the tracker managed to <laughs> follow her. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I was quite impressed. Cool. Mm, so, so, we now know where we are in exactly. time. <clears throat> the okay. MIDI tracker just gives the normalized position inside the piece. Normalized between zero and one. Zero and one. Mm -hmm. We are here. So, I was using this coordinate to sample the, the melody file. Because each melody, in each melody, I store um, the position in the, in the piece. So now the files that you created with that extra that, editor yeah, program. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> so in you this can scan them and find out which melody is now playing. Exactly. I actually do the opposite. I mean, I got um, them sorted a long time. Uh -huh. And then I take the input from the MIDI tracker and a binary search. Okay, we are here. So there is this new melody coming in. So let's create it. So, mm -hmm. so I simulated this, mm, these melodies. They were burning and, and dying like particles again. So again, like a, a particle system of melodies. Of melodies. <laughs> oh. So abstract. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I was creating them and appending them, and each one of them, this is the, the data type, the, the, data, live, yeah. the data type of live melody. So with a huge wow. <laughs> set of properties. That's, uh, Most of them, actually, I, I didn't even use that. Uh, so, but yeah. It's good rush. to know that you could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, these are the creation part in which I store the basic uh, information, like all the notes. And yeah, and then there is the, the proper update of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the melody itself, which is um, which provide you different kind of information of how the pitch is behaving, how it's moving, the line itself, how it's moving, mm -hmm. um, if there's a new note coming in, or I mean, all the information that I need. Yeah, and then I can retry them. Okay, so all these data uh, were provided to, to the scenes, to, for, for me to, to each to of use the them. twelve scenes. Yeah. Exactly. So in each scene, obviously, I, I, want, I, I didn't use all of them. Mm -hmm. I chose to use. Okay, let's focus on, for example, in, in this piece, it's quite relevant the, the two voices, how they move, what's the relationship between them. So I focus on that, the, those aspects. So I choose the, the melody. As a, as a core thing, but in, in each part is different, in each piece. Mm. So this, yeah, is the way, for example, I split, I cut the, um, the geometries in this piece. Mm -hmm. As you see, um, yeah, we should hear the music for that, but if you look back in, into the video, you clearly see that when, when that new melody start uh, is a different piece of geometry so it's like in, in, in technical terms it's an, a new line strip or, or trying to strip yeah it's like cutting yeah, <laughs> the between the, the melody yeah. Yeah. Mm, and that's what I was storing actually into a different 
uh, node that I developed in, uh, in VL. Again, it was uh, like a buffer in which I, sto I was storing all the nodes and I was storing if that node was the first of a new melody. Mm -hmm. So I was using then uh, this information to cut the geometry in that ah, yeah, yeah. And, and start a new one. Exactly. Beautiful. So that's it, basically. And here at the top of this patch again, we saw where all this MIDI Exactly, I get the, uh, the live melodies. Yeah. So this is the particle system of live melodies mm -hmm. coming in here. And then I, I've got some functionality to filter. For example, I want to just have the first voice and mm -hmm. this is the third one because I choose those different channels. Yeah. And then I can split and get the, um, the, the index of the, the melody itself, the last note, pitch, if there is a new bang, new note. And I use all this information to emit the, the elements. Mm -hmm. see. That's it. It's, uh, <laughs> that's it. And, and quite elaborate on one end and then quite simple on the on other the end, end. Like yes. if you analyze it like that. And um, yeah, I think it, it's fine for this piece. Cool. So let's have a look at one more of the movements. You brought one more yeah, of the 12 have a look. movements. Yeah, quickly, just at the second one. Shall we first start yeah. the video? Yeah, exactly. So, so let me first change driver here. So we are sorted. Mm -hmm. And let's drive. Okay, just have a brief look into that one. happening there really each note so, that was played yeah each note was generating a new object bar a new bar mm -hmm. okay and this bar was part of a simulation it was a physical object there so uh, the volume were, were was creating bigger objects and the distribution was literally I took the, the, the keyboard the piano keyboard and each key was emitting in that position and I was scrolling the mm -hmm. key uh, across this plan okay. this plane. so um, I choose to do that because in this piece uh, just looking at the, at the MIDI reference file you clearly see that there are so such a geometrical uh, shapes and uh, lines mm -hmm. so I, I found very interesting uh, to, to, to look at the structure itself, how it behaves, how it moves, how yeah. it develops. So I, um, I recreated somehow the same principle, the, dispatching the object as they are played on the piano. Yeah, and the colors? Mm, what the, was? Yeah, the color... Um, I because it's, it's more colorful than the other one, it has many different yeah, colors. Yeah, it's, it's a wider um, palette, but the note, each note um, was getting the color specific color from the palette depending on the melody that it was part of so, so it, mm -hmm. there was kind of um, if you if you look at the same uh, like same melody of notes they are partially i mean they are they are the same um, hue. hue hue but different yeah variations of it can can we play it again here just the the if you just we wanted to see them here no 
I know because you changed the. I changed it, but I can play uh, again from the file itself. Just to give us an, an, an idea. Let's see. Yeah. Works. Okay. And now here we have this, because in the very beginning we talked about how you would interact mm -hmm. with your visuals in real time. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask, for example, in this piece, what was your skeleton, your interaction uh, doing? Yeah, in this piece uh, I was using my, my movement and also the, the controller to influence the simulation. So I was um, applying forces and I was reducing and managing the, gra the gravity. So yeah, there are different aspects. And, and then I was also directing somehow, uh, choosing the cameras. Ah, yeah. you have the controller. A, is that happening now in this? <laughs> With the mouse. <laughs> yeah, you have to click. But we see that there are different angles. Yeah, I found really interesting yeah. um, to, because usually it's quite hard to also manage the camera. And most of the time it's easier to prepare a single camera. But Having different perspective on the scene gives much more uh, dynamics. Yeah, it makes it uh, kind of cinematic, mm. really. Like exactly. To have some camera so I operation. Chose, I, yeah. I created different cameras and then I, I was choosing live which one to take. Yeah. So um, that's, yeah. And also you told me with the other hand you were in influencing the gravity. Yeah, I mean, I had both the controllers with some functionalities. I was, I was able to reduce the gravity which means when they get emitted, they have a force that push them up. In fact, they bounce a bit. Yeah, if that, I, that, I like that one a lot. <laughs> but when if I reduce the gravity, they yeah. stay. That's so no? nice. If you, if you have a chance to watch that later, that's a very nice and subtle. It's a very subtle effect. But they yeah, are but follow the music, no? Yeah. And nice. yeah, then I could apply with the other hand. I was applying forces, um, like literally pushing the object and so let's talk about the uh, physics simulation how is it done yeah it's a ballet engine which is an ballet available 3D. yeah ballet 3d by Vox, uh, by Vox. This engine yeah and i managed to i mean to have a yeah, there's quite a large number of objects you're simulating there but yeah there's quite a optimization behind i mean i mean in trying to kill them as soon as possible. When they're out of sight there. Yeah, or where, where they are in the background. And yeah. But in the end, I managed to, to have a good yeah, number of them. It looks and decent. Yeah. And that's, uh, so if, if we happened to have a piano here, we could uh, try to play this ourselves. In theory, it could be possible, yeah. So what, it would be possible. Let's see what we got here. Um, oh, look at this. What's that? What do you think? If I if it, I would hold it, it like that, yeah, maybe. Let's Shall we? Ah, but wait. We need to to give it a sound, no? Yeah. How do you do that? Mm, probably there was a yeah. There was uh, something here. I guess. I'm not sure. Starting another program. What's that? So yeah. Um, that will provide just the some audio feedback, the audio playback of the. Shall we? Yeah. Seems to. Seems to. Bring him back. Ah, it's Ooh. here. Nice. So how, the the faster, the the harder I press, the larger the keys are, and the lower I press. That's it. Nice. Huh? No, let's let's. Look at, look at. <laughs> it's very nice. Now this is quite fun because in this piece the pianist was really literally improvising also, not during the concert, but it's just a nice tool to, to yeah. play with. <laughs> I could play with it for hours, but I think it's time for us to maybe uh, let our viewers go to bed. Yeah, uh, it's already so. quite late. So let me close the patch. Uh, huh? We'll close it. Any uh, closing words? Um, so this is not yet documented online. Mm -hmm. All we saw today was exclusive. It's secret. Don't show anyone. Yeah. yeah so Nobody else saw this yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really hope that, the, actually, I know that there will be much more documentation because they are shooting a sort of documentary about the project. Nice. Uh, looking forward. 
uh, to see it. Um, Will there yeah. be any uh, follow-up shows of this? Are you showing it again? Yeah, next week actually. Oh. There's another gig. Where? In Perugia, in Italy. Can I get tickets? Of course. Am I on the guest list? Yeah, for sure. That's um, how you do it. <laughs> um, cool. And then, and, yeah. and I, then will, I will announce any other concerts. Because, because obviously well, it has to go yeah, yeah, on As tour. soon as, as possible. As, as soon as I got some documentation, I will bring you around. Cool. Yeah. Well, any questions? No, seems clear. Yeah, everything yeah. clear. Yeah. Then I thank you so much thanks, for coming. Thanks so much, and uh, see, you. see you next time. Yeah. Yeah.